That fear was what uh, many Americans felt, not only on that day, but have felt since then. And what we really have to do is regain our sense of courage as a nation and, and our ability to feel that, that we can be safe. I'm reporting from outside the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., but I have a question for you in Northeast Ohio. Question, is Northeast Ohio safer than it was 10 years ago? News Channel 5's Paul Kiska explores the question of the fight against terrorism in Northeast Ohio. In reality, most of the security at the airports is theatrical. It's for show. But what about all of those body scanners at airports like Hopkins? Reportedly, the TSA's failure rate in detecting suspicious items in recent years has been as high as 70 percent. We don't know whether or not those body scans will detect, a, will deter a real non-amateurish or professional attack. Al McGinty spent 31 years with the FBI specializing in counterterrorism. Now retired, McGinty says national security really hasn't been tested by terrorists like those who planned the 9-11 attacks. All those thwarted terror attempts you hear about, McGinty says, were planned by amateurs. There have been some terrorist attempts, but they've been pretty amateurish. And they have been thwarted by either basic public response, the increase in public awareness, which is good, and basic law enforcement that would have happened anyhow with or without Homeland Security. It's Steve Dettelbach, U.S. Attorney for the Northern District of Ohio, says after 9-11, national security shifted from investigating an attack to prevention. It's working, he says. A huge number of FBI agents were basically retasked from that sort of reactionary, reactive mode to the terrorism prevention mode. Edelbach says national security units, fusion centers, and the Joint Terrorism Task Force were all formed so local, state, and federal authorities can share information, chatter, trends, and monitor social media. But is Cleveland or the Lake Erie coastline a target? There's nowhere that I think is immune from these issues. Uh, on the other hand, I, I think people need to understand that a lot is being done uh, to improve the way we do law enforcement in the country. And I don't think that the idea of sort of telling everybody that, oh, you know, nowhere safe is true. I mean, we are safer than we were on 9-11. Dettelbach says terror cells and the people who fund them can be found anywhere. He recently prosecuted a case out of Toledo. The FBI literally caught them in the act of stuffing the money into the rails of a truck that was going to be sent overseas to Hezbollah. So, are we safer now than we were 10 years ago? The reality is we don't know. We have spent hundreds of billions of dollars on homeland security. We've created enormous bureaucracies. We've made flying very unpleasant, but there have not been any attacks. What does that mean? The answer is we don't know. Al-Qaeda is still out there. Paul Kiska, News Channel 5. We all want safety and security in our lives. We all want to know that when we call for emergency workers that they're able to respond and respond quickly and that they're able to talk with each other once they do call. You know, there's been a push to make it easier for first responders to communicate during emergencies with different agencies. The city of Cleveland recently purchased the new equipment and plans to have that new equipment in operation by the year 2013. Now let's head back to Danita Harris in New York City. Thanks, Leon. You know, thousands of motorists on I-71 pass it every day. Our Rich Geyser tells us about one man's risky endeavor to spread patriotism following 9-11. I look at every time I go up and down that highway. Have you noticed it? Right there, on top of a light pole in the middle of I-71 around West 150th. The American flag has been flying here for almost 10 years since 9-11. It makes me feel very American. A wave of patriotism swept our country following the events of 9-11. Flags were everywhere, on homes, cars, businesses, and in parades. Brian Crawl needed to express his feelings, but the condo he lived in had no way to display a flag. Luckily, he worked for ODOT in highway lighting and had a big cherry picker truck that he used to change bulbs. I'll put it out somewhere where everybody can see it. So I went out in the middle of the night and put the flag up on a light pole. He picked a high traffic area between downtown Cleveland and the airport, where over 90,000 motorists pass each day. 
He also wanted pilots to see it flying in and out of Hopkins. I just, you know, felt felt that I wanted to do something for the people that were involved in 911. Brian did this without his supervisor's permission, but it soon became a popular addition to the highway. I didn't intend to keep it out there that long. Eventually everybody, you know, brought theirs in and stuff, so I pulled it down. The day I pulled it down, there were so many phone calls at to Ohio Department of Transportation that they visually wanted to see it and they wanted it back up. It is now Brian's mission to care for the flag. So every six months I would personally buy the flag myself and go out on my time and change it out. Eventually the VFW took notice and began to donate flags as needed. It's a shining example of the passion that we all should have. I think it's great. I think we need more people that are patriotic. <laughs> I think he did a great job. I think he put it up there for all of us that don't have a place to hang a flag. It's just showing people that he loves this country as much as everybody else that goes on that highway and looks at that kind of, looks at that flag. I'll never forget. You know, I seen it live on TV and you know didn't understand at the time and all the circumstances involved. I just feel bad for the. Families. I think I'm proud to live here in America. I think I'm proud to have the workers that put that flag up there to put it up there to care about our country. Thank you, Brian. Rich Geyser, News Channel 5. And since this flag was so popular, Brian put a flag in each of the three counties his district serves. We'll be right back. Uh, frustration, uh, sorrow for the victims. Uh, sadness for the country and the soldiers that eventually are going to have to deal with this and they're dealing with it now. So.